I could stay like this Forever following you Just don't get too far And I'll be right where you are Abby here purple cottage crafts and welcome back to another video here on my youtube channel so with this in this video i'm going to be showing you um, how to emboss on velvet silk velvet now this is not a new technique or process by any means and um, the first person i watched um, actually she introduced me to this i didn't even know this existed um, is anna from quilt roadies and i of course will link her channel below and i'll also leave a direct link to that video where she showed how to do this because it was a couple of years ago I think so I'll, I'll find it for you guys in case you want to watch it now you can of course search on YouTube um, for um, you know embossing with um, velvet or even some blog posts I'm sure or something like that so I'm not this isn't a tutorial this is a hey let's watch Abby emboss some different velvets that she has so that's what this is so I've already um, played with a couple pieces now the package that I ordered and I've had this for well over a year probably closer to two years this is this is what Abby does so um, the the kind of golden rod was mixed in with the sampler so I didn't select that color personally but it's fine I can make it work in other projects so but I have this beautiful pink one here and of course all my um, purple lavender ones I already have those um, put away because I'm gonna save those for um, you know an Abby project down the road but this one's really pretty this kind of dusty mauve color and then here's that kind of golden rod um, and then this really really pretty blue and then we have this green right here so I just ordered like little bits of each color because I wasn't sure how if I was gonna like doing this process or you know whatever and I love it so I'll definitely go back and purchase some more from the seller if I can find them on eBay still because like I said this was a couple years ago now um, Anna had used wood stamps and these are hand carved stamps from India and I have a set that I got from Michaels like years ago but I can't find it um, it must be still in one of my totes I haven't unpacked this one's part the, this is my favorite um, favorite one from out of the ones that I have I don't have a big collection as you can see it's just what you see right here and um, so this one's gorgeous and so I found these on a combination of Etsy and eBay so you can just kind of search for, you know, wood stamps, hand carved stamps, that kind of thing. So I don't know if you can use these on rubber stamps. I wouldn't think you could because you're using an iron. It might melt the rubber, but I don't know. So if you guys want to try it, that's at your own risk. Abby is not saying to do it because <laughs> I just don't know. So one of these, um, this, I have an extra one. It's the yin yang sign, but I don't use, um, I don't craft with that symbol so um that's off to the side so it was like a little sampler package for all these tiny ones and then i think we're almost done yeah that's it all right so let me show you the ones that i have um done thus far let me get these off to the side and i will have um, a couple examples or samples to show you how i'm incorporating these into some different projects because i am actively working on um a journal right now which will eventually be up for sale once i finish it yes shameless plug <laughs> my channel I guess I can do that occasionally so anyway um, I wanted to try this I thought you know I'm gonna get it out I'm just gonna try it because it's crazy I've had it for so long and I've never done it so here are the ones I did on the yellow these are my first uh, test strips because this is not a favorite color of mine and a, it's a it's my least favorite color let's put it that way and the package that I got so I thought I thought if I messed it up I wouldn't be too upset <laughs> So you can see there how cool that embossing is. This one isn't 100% because that was the first one I did. I was afraid I was holding it on too long, so I got a little nervous and, and uh, moved it. But I'll hold it up just one at a time. Look at that embossing. Isn't that cool, you guys? I did not even know that this existed until I saw Anna's video a couple years ago. And it's just awesome. Now, her channel is called Quilt Roadies, but she does all kinds of stitching pro uh, projects, I almost said problems, projects and things like that, you know, so it's not just a 
channel for quilters because I'm not a quilter um, at all but I just enjoy listening to her so anyway so there's that plus she is a fellow Oregonian now this one's my favorite this is what's going to be going into it the journal I'm working on right now it is so pretty look at that and you can see the impression on the back side look at that you guys that is just so gorgeous I love it now this is not 100% um, silk I mean all of these this is not everything else I showed you is and Anna had said in her video to use 100% silk um, velvet so that's what I looked for and that's what I purchased I don't know if you purchase a different type if it'll work if it'll melt I don't know so I'm just sticking with what I saw on that tutorial however I do have a lot of like um, fabric um, upholstery you know fabric store remnants like the books the sample books and stuff and I wanted to try it on one of these pieces you know I don't know what this is because I don't know um, furniture fabric and that kind of thing and but it feels um, a little bit it feels thicker than like this velvet for sure like at least two times if not three and I'll hold it up so you can see and it's very very soft so I wanted to give it a try and I used it on my large one here and it worked I mean I think I held this one on a little bit too long as well because since this is thicker I wasn't sure so I got a little bit of a brown right here but I don't care because that makes it look like it's just aged a little bit so I'll hold this up there still so you can see it but it worked on this so I was really um, excited because I have a lot of this kind of stuff in different colors so I'm definitely gonna um, be using this um, process on those items as well all right so I'm gonna go ahead and get myself set up I need to get my iron out and get it turned on and so you're going to need an iron, your 100% silk velvet, unless you want to use something like this or another um, substrate that you like. You're going to need water spritzer and then an iron. So, and then something to protect your space for ironing. Actually, you don't need to because we're putting it, this down. So there we go. All right, I'm going to get myself set up, get some of these um, cut down to size, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I am ready to go. So I went ahead and got all the um, velvet cut down to the, um, the size of the stamp that I want to use. So I did also want to note that, um, let me show you an example real quick. I, like I said, it was kind of like a variety pack. So this velvet here has the plastic backing on there. You, you hear that? You can see how that looks totally different than this velvet. So you don't want to use this kind because it'll melt because you're putting the iron on the underside. So the velvet goes down onto the stamp okay sorry about that you guys all right so what was I doing oh yes so I wanted to make sure I showed you that um, example with the plastic on the back you don't want to use that kind so I'm not using all of the stamps that I have I'm just gonna be using this little bit here because I want to kind of be mindful of the velvet that I have and what I will use it on as far as projects okay now you can if you want to and I think I did this uh, just so my whole tabletop didn't get wet from this but you don't have to put this down I didn't before to be honest with you I, I didn't but I, I'm gonna try it this time and see if it just kind of helps a little bit because the last time when I tried I had uh, my paper underneath there okay so this obviously is not let me zoom in a little bit here this uh, silk velvet is obviously not um, as wide as the stamp but that doesn't matter you can do whatever you want let me move these babies over here you can do just a part of the stamp much like we do when we're inking it's you know it's whatever you want it to be so I'm just going to try half of this um, leaf here on that so I'm going to go ahead and put this right here and I left a little bit of length that way um, I would ensure I had enough to cover the whole length of this but some other ones I'll show you in a moment I'm just going to spray this like this and I have my iron on high um, that seemed to be that seemed to work for me and the lady that I watched that's what she had too so I'm just going to go with what I watched so and you're going to hold this down and you hear that of course because it's the iron in contact with the wet and um, she said that she does not um, go back and forth because sometimes it can make the silk move or the velvet move and um, she just kind of holds it on there and I think we're good. I might have held on a little bit too long. I'm still kind of working out the time in my head. So, but this is a learning experience here. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful this is. I'm going to be embossing velvet forever now. Oh my goodness, look at how gorgeous that is. That is so pretty. Oh, I love it, love it, love it so much. Now, if you still feel like your piece is damp, just set it off to the side to dry. I didn't use my heat tool because I have other things to be doing, so that's all I did is, is just kind of put it off to the side so all right so the next one we're going to try is let's do this this is my favorite one 
All right, so on this is why I purposely um, made it longer because that way it gives me an option to turn this into a flip or um, a side tuck or something like that. So I just that's why my piece is a little bit longer in case you're wondering. So, and I apologize, you guys. I forgot to turn my notification down for my laptop, but I don't want to stop. So I'm just going to give this some wet. And it, like I said, you can just use part of the stamp. You don't have to use the whole entire stamp. So... Someone is at the front door. You guys, I am so sorry. I do not know who is at my door. My craft rooms are not in the house. They are um, attached to the back of our RV bay. So my husband put a um, Alexa dot thing out here. So um, must have a package being delivered. I'm so sorry, you guys. But hey, that's life. <laughs> Look at how gorgeous this is. I love it so much. Oh my goodness. Now you'll have to find the magic number as far as like um, how long to keep it on there for yourself. Um, and like I said, I'm still learning this. So, And this obviously is not as wide as the stamp, but I don't care. I'm just going to kind of go down the center right there. I think that looked cute. Just kind of have partial of it. So. Hey. Oh no, okay. I thought my iron turned off. I was like, no! Okay, we'll try that and see how we do. Lift it up just a little bit and see. Oh, it's good. Look at that. It's so pretty. I like want to like tap my feet. It's so pretty. So you can see that uh, really cool fade, how it goes off to the side because that's where the velvet, you know, didn't meet with the stamp. So, oh my gosh, I love this so much. Okay, what are my next ones here? Now, these are a little bit smaller. And you can do uh, multiples of these at a time if you want to, and, and uh, I want to. <laughs> so that'll make this video too super long. So let's do, um, see if I can do all four at once. I should be able to. I won't make you guys watch me do all of these because that would be crazy. I'm, oh no, I can't actually because these two are different heights. So are these. Ah, all right. We'll just do one at a time. That's fine. All right. So, and I'll probably either make this part of process because how boring is it to watch me just kind of repeat the same thing. So... Um, enjoy me embossing some more velvet. officially obsessed with embossing velvet. It's so fun and it's so pretty. I cannot wait to order some more in different colors and different widths. Now, um, yes, I am serving you up some embossed velvet. You can laugh if you must. That's okay. I like to use old plates and platters and bowls and things like that to put my little bits and bobs on. And so this one is perfect for when I'm um, doing big things, but I have some flowers and stuff are going to be in here. So I just wanted to mention it in case you're like, what does that girl think she's doing with the serving platter in her craft room? Well, that is why. Look at how pretty these are. I'm so excited. This is my favorite, I think, this color um, out of this. So, <clears throat> And I just did half the leaf, like I told you. And I have a, um, re a reason why I did these two together. Now, some of these have a really deep impression and some don't. Um, it just I was just trying to play with different pressure levels and see what I liked. You can see on this one how it's kind of brown because I left it on there um, a little bit too long because I, I, it seems like the right time for me is between six and seven seconds. So, um, but I don't care because that just looks like it's been aged and you know, you can just spritz it with some coffee or tea dye and kind of age it up a little more if you want to. But look at how pretty and they're so shimmery and so fun. I love them. Just so, so pretty. So if you have never tried your hand at embossing velvet, I would encourage you to do so. As you can see from just watching me do it, it's super simple, easy. Um, but again, I will, of course, link Anna's video in the description box below because this is she is the inspiration for me to do this um, two years later. <laughs> but hey, I'm getting it done. Like this one here, I wanted to show you this, um, this side here. It doesn't have uh, much of, of a depth because I was trying to get like a fade a little bit because it w it's not as wide as the stamp is so but I think it's so 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 pretty all right you guys oh I did want to mention before I forgot if um you don't happen to have like a uh, iron like this is uh one I use my craft room only it's not for house like our clothing and stuff so I have that and I can link this one below if you want um I got mine from HSN 
and then uh, this is a little handheld seam iron that I got from Walmart. This will work too. I would stay away from anything that had the holes because you're going to get that hole impression on here unless you want like a polka dot look, which would be cool too. But if you want to print and just the image on the stamp, I would just use a flat part. So this works as well. This is the one I keep down here. My big one goes upstairs where my in my fabric room and stuff. But I wanted to mention this. This was like 13 bucks at Walmart. So you can definitely give this a go. Now, using this on a longer stamp, however, you might have to just do it in two stages. Like for this one example, um, I would make mine go back here because of the holes. I would just, you have it put the velvet down and obviously it's gonna be this way but you would just you know put like this and then you can just you know move the iron down to this last part does that make sense so at least that's what I think I will do when I try it with this little tiny one um, I just happen to have my big one down here so now I wanted to show you a couple samples of how or examples I should say how I'm gonna be using these um, in different projects and so I happen to be working on this uh, blue themed journal which will be for sale eventually once I get it done I think I already mentioned that before <laughs> in this video sorry I, I I've been filming this over like a, a time span throughout the day so I forget sometimes where I, what I said earlier so uh, what I'm going to do is on this page here let me scooch up just a tad so you can actually see what I'm doing here there we go so this page opens up like this and so I thought it'd be really cute to put this here and make it like a little side pocket and then I just grab the tag for, you know, just to show, and then you can stick it in here like that. Now, how I'm going, what I'm going to be using for adhesive is just my um, Beacon 3-in-1, aka Fabri-Tac, they're the same thing. So I did a little sample piece on this little scrap bit here, and I just put the bottle directly onto the velvet, and it made a little bit of a mark, but I was probably being a little heavy-handed by pushing it down. This is still fine, I think. But then I put some on this side, and then I used uh, this little um, silicone spatula, and I very carefully like, spread it out, and it is much better. It doesn't have quite the, you know, it's it's you can't even tell that this is has adhesive, uh, adhesive on the back, so I like it. So that's what I'm going to do again. All right, let me get these stamps out of the way. I have this on it. wood thing so I can move it a little bit easier. All right, so let me grab this here. And these are just the little patty papers. You can give them Dollar Tree. Of course, you can use a larger, you know, like parchment paper or if you want to. I have a video on that. I'll link it below in case you want to see um, the different ways that I was uh, I use them in my crafting. I always have to triple check because sometimes I have glued the wrong side before. Okay, so I'm just going to go across the bottom here. And what I did is I just let the glue just kind of fall onto the velvet. I didn't like, you know, push it into it or anything like that. Okay, it's going to take its sweet time coming out. Of course, when I wasn't filming, it came out lickety split. So, I mean, I really don't even need that plastic or that um, deli paper or patty paper, it's technically called. Um, but it's just kind of habit to have something down when I glue, so... And then you have this little side tuck pocket like this, like bloop. Now, if you wanted to do more of the corner up here, whatever, you could definitely um, put more glue. If you didn't want the your pocket to be, um, I'm trying to get this out with my fingernail, that's not wanting to cooperate. Now, if you wanted to have um, a little bit uh, tighter pocket, like meaning you don't want it to be um, put um, a lot of big things in it, you could definitely just, you know, obviously put more adhesive closer in. Um, but I try to get it onto the edge as much as I can that way. Um, you want to fold like a little piece of a notepad or piece of paper or something you'll have a little bit more room for that um, as far as like the height of it so hope that makes sense all right so the next example and the last one because I'm sure you guys are like uh, can you end this video Abby it's way too long so on this one I'm just going to use these to hold it down I want to make this as a page tab and I thought it looked really super cute right here. Now normally I would slow stitch um, these kind of things on because I'm obsessed with that but um, I don't want to take away from the embossed velvet because I think that is just beautiful so I'm just going to um, glue this on and you can see it right here so I just kind of um, left did two on this strip here and it's going to go on here 
just your simple super super simple basic page tab nothing very exciting I mean well you know it's cute so I'm going to just put some glue on the back side of this off camera because you just saw me do that and um, I'm sure you guys know how to put on glue so I'm going to put it right up Chia kind of scoot you down a little bit more there we go and then we'll put it on this side and then we have just this cute little page tab. I'm just going to leave a little tiny bit up top there so you have something to kind of grab onto. And then as soon as that dries, it's awesome. You have yourself a really cute page tab to use. So let me hold these babies up so you can take a peek. See? Look how cool that looks. So I like it. Really neat, fun, uh, fun um, page tab. And then on this one here, oh, this piece here I put in just as a um, decorative piece because I, or excuse me, no, I made it a flip on this one. So I didn't emboss on this pic, uh, this piece of velvet, but I wanted to just include that. So that'll be something you'll see in the flip through vid video um, once I get this done because you know, slow Abby. All right, so there it is. I think it's just really cute. I like it, and you know, and then you flip it open like this, and you can do your journaling or whatever you want to put on the inside. So. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video from me and that maybe I was um, able to inspire you to emboss on your velvet like Anna inspired me to do. So please make sure that you are checking the description box below for all of the um, the links to Anna's uh, YouTube channel. And I'll link, um, if I can find the eBay shop, I'll try to um, find them and link their shop in the description box below, as well as the iron that I purchased from um, HSN. I know you can get it on Amazon, at least I think you can. But anyway, all right, guys, so thank you so much, and I hope that this was helpful and inspiring, and sorry if it was a little bit too long, but, you know, it's Abby. What can I say? <laughs> all right, you guys, I will see you next time. Oh, look how cute that looks. I wanted to show you that. This is changing. Don't ignore this. I'm doing something different. Ugh, we're going to cover that up. So look how cute that looks, the, the velvet. That's, I like that. You can kind of see it poking out. So, All right, you guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.